What's up guys, it's Lionel the Builder back again with another video and today I'm going to do a little bit of a JavaScript course. Um, this past Thursday we taught uh, JavaScript in an open chat form and people asked me, dude, where's the video from that? And I was like, mm, damn, I forgot to record that. Um, for those of you who don't know, I'm Lionel with the Digital Builders. We teach people how to code. All of the links are in the description. Um, without wasting too much time, let's get into it. So I'm going to use this thing here called uh, Free Code Camp. This is the JavaScript course. And since this is the first one, we're going to just start at the top and we're going to make it to here, which is exactly where we made it on our um, JavaScript open chat. So let's start at the top. If you want to follow along, just open up Free Code Camp, right? So the first one's really easy. You just have to comment your JavaScript code. In order to do that, you just hit two of these and then whatever you type is going to be a comment, right? And comments are basically used to just keep little notes to yourself when you're coding. You know, excuse me, y'all should y'all already know that. Let's keep it moving down. You go to the bottom and you hit run the test. You should create a one of those with at least five letters. Okay. They want us to do one of these also comment and then it goes like that run it next challenge now we're talking variables what is a variable they always get complain or explained as a container i've also heard that that's not necessarily a good explanation but yeah just think of something that is an empty container which you can hold a value inside of it. Now, what type of value is where it gets a little tricky. It could be a number, it could be a string, it could be a Boolean, it could be a date, it could be an object, it could be all sorts of different things, right? Oh, ha, why don't I just read the explanation because I looked over here and it's all right here, all of them. In computer science, data is anything that is meaningful to the computer. JavaScript provides eight different data types which are undefined, meaning that you have not defined it anything at all. It's almost like a, a Schrodinger's cat kind of situation where like, what is that thing if it hasn't been defined yet? That's, that's actually kind of trippy when you think about it. Undefined. That would be like if, if the web, and not to get too Black Mirror on y'all, this is just how I think. I do this all the time where I'm thinking like, imagine before you're born before you're in this universe, before you even come to like, you know, your parents' womb, you're undefined, right? What is that? It's undefined. No one knows what it is. So in coding, when you're coding in your browser, you're technically God at that moment and you're about to create a variable. And if you don't put nothing there, it's undefined. Next is null. Hmm. What would you, how would you describe null? What's the difference between null and undefined? If you're a JavaScript expert, drop that in the comment. Matter of fact, let's let's not do that. Let's let's not let's not not know our shit. You know what I mean? What is the difference? This is my assistant. What oh I'll I'll go to my code mentor, by the way. What is the difference between null and undefined? In JavaScript and TypeScript, null and undefined represent values that denote the absence of a value. But they are used in slightly different contexts and convey different meanings. With undefined, it means that a variable has been declared but has not yet been assigned. It is a default value of variables that have not been initialized. If a function does not explicitly return a value, it implicitly returns undefined. Accessing a non-existent property Accessing a non-existent property. Hey, mom, what's up? Hey, stranger. Stranger? What do you mean? I ain't heard from you in a minute. It has, it has been a minute. I'm actually um, shooting a video right now, too, so I hate to have to call you back. <laughs> oh, no, you're not, you're not at home. I was going to stop by. You're not home. I am home. You should stop by. Please stop by. All right. All right. All right. I'm on my way. All right. I'll see you soon. Love you. All right. Bye. Bye. 
Uh, we're gonna we're gonna cut that out. I don't have an editor. We're actually not gonna cut that out. Anyway, uh, <laughs> null is an assessment value that indicates the intentional absence of an object value. It is used to represent nothing, empty, or value unknown. Mm. So you're using that to represent nothing empty or value unknown null must be assigned explicitly to a variable okay it represents the absence of value in a more intentional or no value sense right right so that's the key the key difference there right that makes sense you would equal null on purpose and then now you're saying like no this is nothing straight up a boolean is like if something is true or false look into boolean math boolean algebra there's an entire um there's an entire what do you call it theory of math that um even before computers were even made or even thought of called boolean math where everything is either a zero or a one it's super um interesting but then and then they eventually ended up using that to speak to computers long story short we we need this we need to summarize or we're, we're not gonna ever move through this right it's already been six minutes a string is letters it's sentences it's you know a string is basically that's what strings are symbol would be um you know symbols like you know what symbols are a big int big int and number dang we're gonna have to go back here what is the difference between big integers and numbers? That's important. And then object, I always think of objects just as like objects. Like how you have a cup, how you have a bracelet. It's an object. Properties of this cup is blue. Function of this cup is hold drink etc etc in the context of programming particularly in languages like javascript and typescript big int and num meaning number are used to represent numbers but they have different uses and limitations <clears throat> the number type is a stand standard numeric type so zero to infinity right big int was introduced in es in 2020 this is new it's a numeric numeric type that represents integers of arbitrary size big n is particularly useful when dealing with numbers larger than this number <laughs> which is the largest value a number can safely represent without losing precision values of big int type are created by appending an n to the end of an integer integer literal or by calling the big int function. All right, so it's just a big number. Big int, big number. For example, computers distinguish between numbers such as the number 12 and strings such as, see, when you put quotations, it's a string now. Or dog, or one, two, three, cats, which are collecting of characters. Yeah, all of these are strings. Once you put your quotes, it's a string, which means a sentence, right? Computers can perform mathematical operations on a number, but not on a string. Once you put your quotes, it's letters to the computer now, and it's not going to be able to mathematically calculate. Variables allow computers to store and manipulate data in a dynamic fashion. They do this by using a label to point to the data rather than using the data itself. Any of the eight data types may be stored in a variable. Now, the whole pointing to thing gets a little tricky. What do they mean by that? It means that any of these data types already exist within your computer's hardware somewhere so when you as the god creating something for the computer to, to work with and to, to know what this is in this world that you're creating whatever you're assigning already exists somewhere Ooh, that's actually getting back on black mirror right that means that in reality whenever something is created it already exists somewhere but the creator mm, we must have we must have some sort of like hard drive beyond reality, right? Where everything is already created. And then 
I mean, well, in our reality, everything pretty much gets boiled down to the molecules and the atoms, which then build these things up. So it, it is a little bit different in that sense. Whereas here you're talking about numbers on a screen and stuff like that. So, but to the computer still, the thought is already there. And whatever you're trying to say, like if you're saying this variable, I'm gonna name it lighter and it equals the string blue. The string blue is already inside the hardware somewhere. You're assigning it and you're pointing it to it. So you can have as many things as you want a pointing to that one thing. And that's what basically tells the computer what it is. Hope that wasn't too confusing. Variables allow computers to store and manipulate data in a dynamic fashion. They do this by using a label to point to the data rather than using the data itself. Yeah, it's not using the data. It's using labels to point. Any of the eight data types may be stored in a variable. Variables are similar to the X and Y variables you use in mathematics which means they're a simple name to represent the data we want to refer to. Right, so that's all a variable is. Mm, it's like a simple name, but then you kind, of, you kind of form it and you create that label so that now the computer and the program will always know what you are talking about. I hate how far removed we are from actually building websites right now, but still this is foundational knowledge that you can use as you progress, right? We tell JavaScript to create or declare a variable by putting the var keyword, like var our name. In reality, we don't use var anymore. You're really going to use let or const nine times out of ten. Um, create a variable called our name. Let's do it. Var our name name we just created of our first variable the variable is called our name and what is the value undefined um in javascript we end statement with semicolon yeah see i did that without even thinking about it it's like um it's like what do you call it automatic at this point right a habit variable names can be made up of numbers letters or symbols but may not contain spaces or start with a number. Use the var keyword to create a variable called my name. My name. Run it. Next challenge. In JavaScript, you can store a variable. Now this is where we get to assign the variable. Once you put that equals, equals, now you're assigning it. In JavaScript, you can store a variable, a value in a variable with the assignment operator equals. My variable equals five. This assigns the number five to my variable. Tricky how computers think like, it's almost like the computer's reading right to left versus how, we're, how we normally left to right, you know? This assigns the number, the number five to my variable. My variable equals five. If there are any calculations to the right of the equals operator, those are performed before the value is assigned to the variable on the left. Var, my var, my var equals five. First, this code creates a variable named my var. Then this code assigns five to my var. Now, if my var appears again in the code, the program will treat it as if it is five, no matter what. Like you're, you basically updated it. And then from then on out, that's what it is until further uh, changes. Assign the value seven to a variable A. Am I screaming? Let me look at the uh, audio here. Check, check, check. I just felt like I was really loud. <clears throat> All right, var equals, var equal, wait, var a equals seven. Run it. What? You should not change the code. Oh, they don't want me to. Reset, only change code below this line. <clears throat> I guess they want that separation to show like at the top, you created it, then down at the bottom, you assigned it a value. Run it. Let's get let's get it. Um, assigning the value of one variable to another. After a value is assigned to a variable using the assignment operator, you can assign the value of that variable to another variable using the assignment operator. Let's read that. Variable, 
myvar, you just created an undefined variable named myvar. Myvar equals five. Now you just assign that undefined variable five. Var my number, you just created another one. My number equals my var. Hella confusing there to do that, but basically now no matter what my var is, my number is also going to like reference that. It will, will be changed with that. No, it's basically my number is the same as my var. They're both five now. Yeah, you, you got it, you got it. The above declares a my var variable with no value, then it assigns it the value of five. Next, the variable named my number is declared with no variable. Then the constant of my var, which is five, is assigned to the variable my number. Now my number has a value of five, which it will have the value of my var, no matter what my var changes to. Number is pointing to that, so it will always have that value. Assign the contents of A to variable B. Var A, A equals seven. Var B. Only change code below. So B equals A, right? Let me make sure I'm not tripping. Yep. <clears throat> Initialize variables. <coughs> Initialize, excuse me. Initialize variables with the assignment operator. It is common to initialize a variable to an initial value in the same line as it is declared var my var equals zero it is i just had a complete brain um erase real quick it's common to initialize a variable to an initial value in the same line as it is declared var my var equals zero create a new variable called my var and assign it an initial value of zero so let's do that my var equals zero is that all we doing my var is not assigned define a variable a with var and initialize o it is common to initialize a variable to an initial value in the same line oh okay so a var a Maybe like that? A equals nine? Var A equals nine. I don't know why that was kicking my ass. Um, declare string variables. Previously, you used the following code to declare a variable. Var, my name. Oh, that's why it was messing me up because I never use var. I use let and const. I forgot you can even declare variables with var, honestly. Previously, you use the following code to declare a variable, var my name. But you can also declare a string variable like this, var my name equals your name. Your name is called a string literal. A string literal or a string is a series of zero or more characters enclosed in single or double quotes. Create two string variables, my first name and my last name. Var my first. Hey, my mom's here. I might have to dip. I'm gonna have to dip pretty soon. Maybe she'll come hop on the, on the stream. <coughs> Var uh, my first name equals Lion. Uh, var my last name equals the builder. Run it. I'm trying to get to the end before we got a dip. Hold on. Let me see how, how far are we. Ma 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 ma. Understanding initial. I believe we were. Where were we? We're past that one. I just want to see how many we got to go. Declare. Was it here? We passed that. We're almost there. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We're definitely not there yet. So we we are. I think we got three more to go. Which one are we doing? Yeah, we're doing that one. Okay. All right. Let's get it. Um, when a variable, when JavaScript variables are declared, they have an initial value of undefined. If you do mathematical operation on an undefined variable, your result will be non, not a number. If you concatenate, which means you put a string with the undefined variable, you will get a string of undefined. 
Initialize three variables a, b, and c with 5, 10, and i am a, respectively, so that they will not be undefined. Okay, so a equals, wait, only change code below this line, above this line. Okay, so var a equals 5, var b equals 10, var c equals i am a, run it. I think we got two more in javascript right i believe this was this one yeah 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 so did we so we got two more and we're and we're we're good to go till next till next time i'm gonna do this every day every other day something like that in javascript all variables and function names are case sensitive this means that capitalization matters my var is not the same as my var yeah that that's that's clear every capital matters Hey mom, what's up? I'll be, I'm almost done, like five minutes. It is possible to have multiple distinct variables with the same name, but different casings. It is strongly recommended that for sake of clarity, you do not use this language feature, best practice. Write variable names in JavaScript in camel case. In camel case, multi-word variable names have the first word in lowercase, the first letter of each sub subsequent word is capitalized. Um, examples. Oh, um, some variable in another variable. This variable is so long. All right, modify the existing declarations and assignments so their names use camel case. Okay, let's let's do it. So this should be low, you low, studly. That should be low, right? Cap var like that. Then we're gonna we're gonna copy this. We're gonna paste it down here. Get rid of that. Var proper camel case. Okay, this one's actually proper. Copy, paste, title case over. That's not camel case. Y'all know what camel case is. When you start off low and then every other letter, the first letter of every other letter is high. You see this all over coding, so get used to it. And this is the last one. The difference between var and let. Thank God, because we don't use var. One of the biggest problems with declaring variables with the var keyword is that you can easily overwrite variable declarations. Var camper, camper equals James. Var camper equals David. Consular camper, it's going to be David because you overwrote it. In the, in the above code, camper variables is originally declared as James and is then overwritten to David. The console then displays the string David. In a small application, you might not run into this type of problem, but as your code base becomes larger, you might accidentally overwrite variables that you did not intend to. Because this behavior does not throw an error, searching for and then fixing bugs becomes more difficult. So that's why we use let. A major update to JavaScript to solve this potential issue with the var keyword. You'll learn about that later. If you replace var with let, then you result in an error you cannot redefine that that one let so unlike var when you use let a variable with the same name can only be declared once so update the code so it only uses the let that's all we got to do and we're and we're done all right so that's that's it for the first episode of javascript free code camp we're learning. We're going to run through this entire thing to get you guys caught up with JavaScript. I'm going to place this in the school, or you might have ran across this on YouTube for free. Join the Digital Builders. We have a Discord. We have a school community. We're learning how to code for free. We're teaching people. We're helping 100 people break into tech this year. I'm Lionel the Builder, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.